here is a final, an actual final on the track. The men's 10,000 meters. Nico Young setting that collegiate record earlier this year. Patrick Deaver with the meet record. And Hob Tom Samuel, the freshman from Eritrea and New Mexico. He will start in the 19th position. This is a final 24 athletes qualified to get here. They're all on the track. Hoptum Samuel already a three-time All-American in his first two seasons between cross-country and indoors, the NCAA cross-country runner-up, and then the second fastest collegian in history over 10,000 meters behind only Nico Young of Northern Arizona. There is Patrick Kiprop representing the University of Arkansas. He is a big part of their team hopes, a big part of their success in cross country with a po podium finish. And then Texas Tech freshman Ernest Chariot, who has the fourth fastest time in the NCAA this season. He was the Big 12 indoor 5,000 meter champion. And they're away cleanly. You can see the two groups of athletes. They stay in those groups through the first turn. And then they will cut for the pole on the back stretch. 24 athletes, 25 laps. And since we set this up by mentioning, of course, the collegiate record, want to take care of a bit of business in terms of where everyone will be this weekend. So Nico Young opting to focus on the 5,000. So he will compete on Friday in that event only, opting not for the 10,000. He'll obviously have the Olympic trials here at Hayward Field coming up. So factoring in the number of different races that he will compete in. And then Graham Blanks from Harvard, the cross country NCAA champion to which Hopton Samuel was second. He's also doing only the 5,000 meters. And then the top three from last year's NCAA championship, it was won by Kai Robinson. The defending champ not going to defend it. He's go the 10,000 at least. He's aiming only for the 5,000 and a title over on that side. So just kind of figuring out some personnel because a lot of people are probably expecting to see a rematch between Samuel and Nico Young because those guys threw down that incredible 10K at the 10 meet earlier this season to which they went below the Olympic qualifying standard of 27 minutes, and Hoptum Samuel, the only athlete in this particular field of 24 that we have right here that is below that 27-minute standard. And they said when he ran that time of 26.53, at the 10, they were aiming for the standard. It came as absolutely no surprise. That race was really set up well to go fast. And I asked a number of different coaches, hey, you know, without Nico Young, without Kai Robinson, without Graham Blanks, how does that change the complexion of the 10,000? They said, honestly, it doesn't matter. It all comes down to who shows up and who races. A lot of people run really impressive times or have won titles, of course, in previous seasons. But this is a blank slate for everyone when you come here to the outdoor NCAA championships and Right now, you can see Hopton Samuel is doing a great job there up front, taking control currently on pace 2730. So very, very comfortable for him given what he ran earlier in the year. It's one thing to kind of be on alert for too is, you know, could that meet record? fall that 2741 you know you have athletes who are well capable of taking that time down that taking down that mark and setting ncaa history pretty good conditions for the 10,000 that we have tonight as well so the um, tom brady is in this race you know michigan tom brady <laughs> there yeah. he is right there without football you can't compete at the university of michigan with the name tom brady and not command a bit of attention and it was quickly in he was quickly informed when he actually came on his official visit he was walking around and his host about two minutes in looked around and said okay so you know tom brady's kind of a big deal around here right tom brady the one you're looking at was born in 2000 the same year that tom brady seven times Super Bowl champion made his debut for the Patriots. And here is something, a little tale of the tape that the Wolverines program put together just a few years ago, kind of measuring these guys up. Pr pretty funny to see here the, the comparables between the two, but uh, he is not named after that Tom Brady. This 
10K. Tom Brady is not named after him. It's actually a family name going back to his late great-grandfather. And he said, you know, that Tom Brady has such great work ethic. I don't really mind the comparisons. Make no mistake, guys, he's from the suburbs of Chicago. He is a diehard Bears fan. So he's a fan of Tom Brady, but not necessarily the Patriots or the Buccaneers. That is a proud Chicago Bears guy. Well, I'm sure he's a good sport about it, and here he is in the uh, national championship 10,000 meter final. If only he'd final. gotten hit 12. That's the one thing I wish that had worked out. That would out. have been great, yeah. <laughs> Any team title hopes they might have, and we're back to the 10,000 meters. With Hatton Samuel still leading, setting the pace. No one wants to head him at this point. So about seven minutes in, we're going to step aside. And when we return, more of our coverage of this men's 10,000 meter final. Just over 16 laps remaining. And Hatton Samuel just a few minutes ago stepped aside and was encouraging somebody else to take the lead. And he has taken up a spot about 10th place now in the pack. Karami Yego of Arkansas there up front. Pace has slowed pretty significantly. They were right around 66 seconds and a couple of 67.5s and now 68.5. So we've slowed down to a 27.55 pace. They were previously closer to about 27.40, 8.56 through the 3,200 meter mark. Karami Yego, the signature sunglasses, and that's normally a bit of a cue. If he has them down, it's a certain mode. He flips them up. At other times, he has his teammate Patrick Kiprop there as well to help with those lead duties, as well as Kansas's Chandler Gibbons, who was positioned well behind Hobtum Samuel before we had a bit of transition there at the lead of the pack. Important team implications for the Razorbacks with two of their runners in this 10,000 meters. Diego currently leading and Kiprop currently in third position. And when you get to this point of the season, a lot of guys like a Patrick Kiprop and those who are in the 10,000, they've just gone to the well so many times going back to the cross country season. Of course, he was Kiprop, an All-American in cross country, as was Karami Yego, part of the podium finish for Arkansas. And in talking to head coach Chris Bucknam, he said the final event of the day, this is going to set the tone for our team and how we finish up on Friday, looking to bookend what we've done from cross Cross country we ran a phenomenal race there we've talked about the fact Arkansas has it on their minds they fell just short of a couple of team titles in the last year so this can be significant in terms of setting them up for success come Friday play pace now above 28 minutes at 28 10 that's leaving a lot of athletes in this field Hoptum Samuel has great closing speed, great mile speed, so he can certainly afford to hang out just a little bit. But some of those others who would like to keep this pace honest, someone like a Patrick Kiprop would like to push things a bit more. Chariot from Texas Tech has been very comfortable, too, throughout the first portion of the race. More than four. And here comes Hoptum Samuel back as we see the lap counter click down to 13 laps remaining. And as they are so tightly packed there up front, one to watch, North Carolina's Alex Phillip, third fastest in the NCAA this year. And one of just the great stories of this outdoor season, a graduate transfer from John Carroll University, where he held numerous Division III records and was a seven-time national champion at John Carroll and when he ran 2751 third fastest this season at this distance it shattered the Tar Heel school record by nearly a minute and coming out of high school Alex Phillip who grew up in the Akron area actually graduated from the same high school as LeBron James St. Vincent St. Mary he reached out to every college coach in Ohio just asking for the opportunity to run for their program most turned him down but got the opportunity at John Carroll which was such a great fit in terms of developing him and then giving him an opportunity to get to North Carolina and director of track and field Chris Miltonberg said he really brings a blue collar mindset and just a want to be part of the program that is something that has impacted the entire team doing a great job right now of positioning himself right near Patrick and Victor Kiprop so when they come up down the finishing stretch, we're a little bit past the halfway mark in 14.10, so 28.20 pace. So we'll step aside again. And when we return to Eugene, more of our coverage of this 10,000-meter final.
All right, back to the 10,000 meters. Conditions are not ideal, maybe a little on the warmer side, but it's going to get warmer over the next three days. And there is some wind out there, to be sure. Dennis Kipnicich of Oklahoma State has now taken into the lead. We've seen quite a bit of exchanging there up front. He's glancing over, wanting Chariot maybe to go up and give him some help as well. Gesturing, you can see a little conversation back and forth. Uh, Karami Yego is always talking to somebody. We, we have seen this over and over uh, in multiple championship races. He's gesturing to people and, and commanding them to maybe get up and get into contention. We have had so many lead changes. Things have slowed pretty significantly. They're now on... 28-26 pace. They're right around 72nd 400s now, so significantly slower than they were through the first 4,000 meters. At 6K, they were right at 17 minutes. So this is leaving it to be really anyone's race up front. And you can see that sliver of orange there of Dennis Kipnicic. He was the lead to their championship during the cross-country season. He was fourth place overall to lead the Cowboys to that team title. And in talking with head coach Dave Smith, they have three athletes in this field. Really feel like that they could get all three to score. Two currently in view from what you can see right now. Not sure what uh, Diego's heat shields being up means, but he is in the lead as he comes up with eight laps remaining. We will step aside for the final time, bring you the conclusion of this 10,000 meters when we return. Arkansas first and fourth with eight laps remaining in this 10K. Four laps remaining in the 10,000 meter final. 13 runners, slightly more than half the field in that lead group and everybody in there still in contention. Alex Phillip has moved up front thanks to a couple of 66 and 65s over the most recent 400 pace, 28-23. Now to this point, starting to see things string out just a bit. And the mantra Alex Phillip carries with him into competition is onward on. No matter what happens, you keep pressing, you keep persevering, you keep working hard. Eventually, you're going to find success. He has been onward on over the last few laps as he is right into the thick of it. Coming up on three laps to go. 68 degrees now here at Hayward Field, so a little bit more pleasant conditions for these distance runners. Arkansas still in a great position to score a lot of points with Patrick Kiprop there in the lead. And then Karami Yego now back about eighth or ninth, but you never know. He can surge up to the front and take the lead again. You never know what you're going to get from him. And this is where you're going to see people start to make moves, and you're going to have to cover the moves that are made. Not necessarily have to do it in an aggressive fashion, but certainly just be aware, be on your toes, as this will start to shake up because everyone here is going to rely on some bit of a kick. And in talking with Coach Gossin from New Mexico, one thing to be aware of is that Hobtum Samuel competed here at the World Championships for Eritrea when he was just 18 years old. Has great familiarity in this venue. Has, oh! Wow, it's a major crash with just a little over two laps remaining. That shakes things up a great deal. Patrick Kiprop is a part of that crash. That's devastating. There's still time. There's still plenty of time. If you maintain composure, you can get right back in it. Let's see if we can tell what happens. Ernest Chariot is up front, and Patrick Kiprop just gets caught on that back step and then tangles up Alex Phillip, tangles Hopton up Samuel. Samuel also goes down but bounces back up and is in fifth place, but you just don't know what kind of a toll that takes. There's a rush of adrenaline to get back up and in the race, especially with just over two laps remaining. And look at Chandler Gibbons trying to stay inside the rail to just remain up up, up top or on, remain on his feet. So everyone behind them too having to hurdle them around. So Samuel rebound, rebounds very well, very quickly. It's Kipnitich of Oklahoma State, Chariot of Texas Tech, Gibbons, or excuse me, um, Samuel of New Mexico, and then Kiprop of Alabama right there. And now Patrick Kiprop has fought his way back up. But how much energy has it taken from him to do so? One lap remaining. 
Ernest Turiat on the inside. He was the one that didn't cause the accident, but that's whose feet Patrick Kriprop tripped over. Habtum Samuel up there in third place. He was part of that carnage with about 100 meters more than two laps remaining. 65 seconds on that last 400 meters. Now it is going to be a throwdown to the finish as they make their way toward the Bowerman Tower. Chiriot not giving up the lead to Kipnitich, and Samuel is also right there. Looked like Victor Kiprot may have gotten tripped up a little bit there with under 200 meters to go. There's Samuel into the lead. Remember, he was part of that crash. He bounced back up off the track. Abton Samuel, the second fastest at this distance. Just a freshman at the University of New Mexico will take the 10K title. And the two Arkansas runners maybe didn't score. Kiprop might have gotten eight. Yego out of the scoring position. 58.2 seconds for the final 400 meters. He is New Mexico's first outdoor national champion since Winnie Kalati won the 10K back in 2019. First for the men's program since Josh Kerr back in 2017 and put on a phenomenal display in the final 400 meters. What a closing kick. What a way to respond after he took a tumble. The carnage there among your lead pack. You can see he gets caught over Alex Phillip. Diving there next to Patrick Kiprop. Swings out, has to run a lot of extra real estate. And then you can see fends off a finishing charge over the last 200 meters. After he ran that incredible 10,000 meter earlier this season, worked extensively on his race tactics, and that was put on display, embracing that finish line in celebration as he is the 10K champion for the University of New Mexico in his first NCAA season. Just a 20-year-old freshman winning the title here and, and recovering from what could have been a devastating fall. There it is. Hatton Samuel wins the race over Victor Kiprop. Dennis Kipnitich, who was part of that whole sprint over the last 200 meters, ends up third. Ernst Chiriot, whose feet Patrick Kiprop tripped over and took two other athletes out with him. And Kiprop for Arkansas only able to score one point for the Razorbacks. That's a major hit to their team title hopes. Abdum Samuel, I want to know just in the instant that you're falling to the ground, what is going through your mind? Oh, that's I'm really, really, <laughs> but I'm really scared because like two laps to go, that's not easy to recover. So, but uh, yeah, I'm so lucky today. Mm -hmm. If I'm falling down and hurt me, my hurt me my leg, that I can't do. But I'm happy. But I'm really, really. That's I'm so sad when I'm I'm falling down like. I think like many, th like many things in my mind, mm -hmm. uh, can I close the gap right now? Like two laps ago. So, but yeah, God, God saved me today. Yeah. So when you get up, is there time for plan? I mean, now that you're up and running, how do, how do you, what, what's, what are you thinking to try and chase that guy down? Uh, that's, for chasing them, that's not easy because when I wake up, like almost a little big gap mm -hmm. for me. So that's, but I'm, I'm really in a good position and I'm, I'm really fit for this race today. So I'm a bit scared, but finally I made it and I'm so happy. Well, you told me the first 3,000 you went thinking there was going to be maybe you could get the championship record. Yeah. Um, when you got up, I realized you just wanted to finish. That's quite a difference between the two. Congratulations on being a national champ. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, one of my plan for this race today is like I want, I know this track is, I've been before two years ago, I'm here, right. like for the World Athletics World Championship yes. Oregon. So I know the track, the altitude, everything. So today, I'm really planning to run like the championship record by uh, 2741. So that's my plan to break the uh, championship record. That's why I'm starting the first like from start 66, 67 until 3K. But the guys, they can't help me. I said, oh, let me stop and just go for a win. And I'm back and join the group. Just I follow the guys and sometimes also I help them. So that's really, really good race. But 
Yeah, I've seen I'm Listen, happy championship of record's one thing. Just take the championship after the fall and call it good. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the fun being here today. That's a nice attitude. Good track. I'm so happy. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate you.